thank you very much vinit uh, for this opportunity to be with all of you if at any time my audio goes down or any there's any technical issue uh, anyone in the audience can just message us and then we will try to correct it and if you have any questions you could type it uh, preferably in private to vinit and then he will forward it to me and i'll try to answer them thank you for joining today and uh, our topic is corona amid corona and uh, i'll talk about this in three broad parts which is we have three sessions over here we will be looking at how do we how do we find compassion how do we gain a better perspective by which we can be compassionate ourselves we can see compassion in the outer world and we can become a channel for compassion so there will be three broad themes look inside look up and look ahead and based on these three themes we'll have the three sessions and each session i will be concluding with one practical exercise and one one succinct carry home message and the practical exercise will be something which you could do as a part of journaling for looking inside for looking up and looking ahead so these are the three sessions which i'll be taking and uh, the the overview of what we are going to take in this session look inside what can we change what is worth changing and how can we change it now this is a situation of we could say unprecedented changes along with uh, at least in terms of our our lived history or our recently experienced history and extraordinary sense of powerlessness many of us may be locked in our homes either because of uh, the governmental rules or because of our own decisions for our own safety the kind of mobility and freedom that we had not just physically but also in terms of doing various things that is substantially reduced so at such a time when there is a lot that is not in our control we begin by looking at what what is in our power to change what can we change yeah can we go ahead so now <clears throat> when we consider what we can change uh, this is a universal living condition so i'm going to draw from the way we are going to do is from rationality to spirituality from spirituality to the uh, primarily the wisdom of the gita i will draw from the broad indic traditions but specifically i'll be focusing on the bhagavad gita and i will draw some things from some other related sources but we will be moving this journey from rationality to spirituality and when we are talking about looking inside we are looking at you know how our our vision of ourselves can be one of understanding of kindness of compassion if you want to be compassionate to uh, anyone else it has to begin with ourselves because among everything that is in our, that we can influence the thing that we can influence the most is we ourselves i'll come back to this theme so we'll talk about how the compassion of the divine manifests in a deeper self understanding and in the provision of resources that can help us gain that deeper self understanding so the universal living condition is that we exist at the junction of the little in our control and the much out of our control this is much more evident say when we are when if if say we were living in a much more natural setting that means say if we consider the lives of animals a deer has its fleet footedness as what is in its control but there are predators all around 
who could pounce and devour it at any moment. So now all of life actually exists. There is a little in our control and there is a lot out of our control. And we exist at the junction trying to leverage what is in our control to further our own survival and our own prosperity. Now if we were to consider a game, if we consider a game like tennis, now within in a game like tennis, sometimes the player is serving and sometimes the player is returning. Now suppose the player is returning and at that time the player is returning against an opponent who is basically like an ace machine. You can barely get the racket to the ball. All that you can see is just the balls whizzing by. So at that time, the player who is trying to return can feel helpless. However, one doesn't have to feel helpless. Because why that phase is not going to go on forever. It's not that you have to the other player is going to constantly be serving and we have to just try to return that which is unreturnable. No. So when, so similarly, in our lives sometimes, what is not in our control increases enormously. The current situation <clears throat> is one such situation where we could say that the unknown that is beyond us is like an ace machine and all that we can do is just somehow get uh, the racket to touch the ball and get the ball back into play if possible. So we exist in the situation but when you frame it philosophically that that is our constant situation but in some situations the what we have in control becomes extremely less. Now the Bhagavad Gita begins by talking about this, uh, this uh, two levels of existence that there is that, that which is changing and that which is unchanging. Na sato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sataha ubhayo rapi drishtontas tvanayo sattvadarshibhi so na sato vidyate bhavo that there is changing and of that of, of that which is changing there is no endurance. And of that which is enduring, there is no change. And the wise see this. So now, first I was talking about the universal living condition. And within this universal living condition, there is a distinctive, we could say almost a unique human condition. Can you go ahead? Now, what is a human condition is that we live within nature and slightly above nature. Now what do I mean by above nature? It's clear that we live within nature. We live above nature in the sense that there is some part of us, something within us which can observe nature. By nature I broadly mean the outer world as well as our inner world. And we can access some power by which we can change certain things. Now we have, we have natural or physical bodies. The word nature as is used in mainstream intellectual discourse, as is used in science. So for example, we have naturalism. Their naturalism refers to physical or material nature as being the defining reality or even the sole reality. So, now we have, we have our own biological instincts, we have our psychological drives, there is something beyond it. And no matter how much we reduce the human being there is, and we can go very deep into biology and psychology, but beyond the reduction to the physical, there is something that still remains. Now one simple evidence of this is that now, if we consider ourselves as simply a part of nature, there is something distinctive about us because of which we 
are able to to a large part through a large part of history uh, we are we have become the most powerful among the species of course how we have used that power constructive or destructive is a different issue but we are not we don't have sharp jaws uh, sharp teeth like tigers we don't have we don't run fast like uh, deer or cheetahs we don't have huge bodies like elephants or hippos but still there is something about us that has elevated us and this is not just our intelligence that's definitely there but even animals have intelligence to process things it is that you know, we have a spiritual side which is significantly developed even among those who are not spiritual we long for something more now we long to find meaning we long to find purpose we long for something lasting so although we have our biological drives we can also examine our biological drives we can observe them we can examine them we can curtail them all living beings eat we humans can we also need to eat but we can choose whether to eat or not we can fast when we want to not just because we have to so why am i talking about this that this is to be understood that there is a physical side to us but we have something above which observes and because it observes we can think further than the immediate future we can plan consciously but this capacity to plan consciously also has a flip side that we can also fear unconsciously because we are we can to some extent disconnect ourselves or distance ourselves more precisely from our physical condition so we can see further see with wisdom see with knowledge now if now we, there were a pandemic among animals uh, if a virus would infect them they wouldn't really understand what's happening they would understand that so we are dying and something is causing our death but they wouldn't be able to understand what exactly is happening they were they the animal bodies have natural healing mechanisms but we have a developed system of medicine so so we to some extent although we are physically frail but we have something within us which gives us the capacity to change things outside us can you i'll explain this can we move ahead so what can we change and what is worth changing what now there are in life there are two things what we live with and what we live for if we consider life to be like a car drive then what we live with is similar to what we drive with it's the it's the fuel the gas and what we drive for is our destination uh, suppose you see a neighbor coming out or uh, rushing out of their home and rushing toward the car and just racing out we ask where are you going he says i am going to get put put gas in my car okay after that where will you go he says i'll put uh, i'll go to the next gas station to put gas over there okay after that He says, "No, I'll go to the next gas station." But where are you going? He says, "I'm going to the gas station." He says, "There's something strange over here." Obviously, if we are to drive, we need gas. But what we drive with is not what we drive for. Usually. So similarly, you know, in our lives, there's what we live with and what we live for. What we live with is various resources. it can be our well we live with first of all food we live with money we live with various resources with facilities with luxuries but what we live for is our values and our purposes so this is what i talk about the difference between the living condition and the human condition more or less animal for animals what they live with and what they live for is identical 
that they live for fulfilling their bodily needs and bodily drives now we also do that but we seek something more can you go to the next slide so <clears throat> what are, what is the context for what we are discussing now we are trying to understand within a situation of external powerlessness what how can we access power how can we go within and find some sense of perspective and power there so what we live with and what we live for now when we keep improving what we live with that leads to external development and that gives us outer power and when we improve enrich enhance what we live with that give, that leads to inter, internal development and that gives us inner power over the last few centuries we have had phenomenal phenomenal scientific development and that has given us access to outer power of the kind that we would not have and even royalty wouldn't have dreamt about a uh, few centuries ago we have airplanes we have telecommunication we have air con air conditioning so all this is indicative that we have extraordinary we have extraordinary outer power so what we now outer power is largely associated with what we live for So it's what we live with inner power refers to what we live for so we can say resources and purposes can we go ahead so when <clears throat> now when what we live with becomes what we live for we soon end up with not with it's with not within with with nothing to live for of course within also we are nothing to live for but what that means is that if suppose somebody starts living only for eating okay you can eat you can eat but how long if somebody decides that okay my only goal in life is to earn money that's good we all need money but when what we live with becomes what we live for eventually we find that life starts becoming meaningless life starts becoming very superficial so the what i said till now i'll be summarizing in one diagram can you go ahead now yeah oh okay this uh, diagram has not come out i exported it as a pdf the diagram didn't come out properly so basically what is there is on the x axis is <clears throat> inner power on the y axis is outer power so inner power low or high outer power low or high so when we have very when we have low inner power and low outer power that is the time when we are ineffective whatever we do it just uh, of uh, we can't do much <clears throat> we 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 are more or less helpless we are powerless now when that is a state of misery when we have no inner power and no outer power and we need to get out of that now this is a stage where we can uh, we just find it unbearable to live like this so to some extent you know the situation that we are in many of us might feel that we are in this first quadrant but suddenly we we have have active busy lives and suddenly we have been reduced to a situation of uh, of uh, great powerlessness <clears throat> so now when we get out of this first quadrant we can go to any of the other three quadrants now if we focus on gaining outer power that means we go uh, we we rise up so then what happens we have lot of outer power but low inner power remember the x axis is inner power the y axis is outer power so when we go up to the if we start from the left bottom as quadrant 1 quadrant 2 quadrant 3 quadrant 4 then now a lot of outer power without much inner power 
can be destructive. Perhaps the uh, most graphic example of this could be say the school shooters who haunt the American imagination especially within the educational system. There can be people with wild minds and powerful machines. Martin Luther King predicted this several decades ago when he said that we have guided missiles and misguided men. Our technological power has outrun our spiritual power. So at such a time we end up becoming destructive. We have outer power and less inner power. And to a large extent human society for, for the last several centuries has concentrated on gaining outer power. And by gaining outer power, we have transformed our outer world. But in the process, many of us have not focused on gaining inner power. So that's one way we may go out from quadrant one to quadrant two. That is we gain outer power. And that's what humanity has done. But there are situations like the current situation we are in where we are thrust out of that quadrant two. Now when we are thrust out of that, the outer power that we have becomes extremely limited. Then where do we fall back? Now either we might sink back if outer power is the only power we thought of as power, then we might feel ourselves powerlessness. Now when I am talking about powerless or out, outer, we not having much outer power, I am talking about this more at an individual level, so at a scientific and technological level. Uh, we have researchers and medical healthcare professionals who are working extremely hard uh, uh, to treat people, to find out, uh, to care for people who can't be treated and to find out some medicines to cure it, uh, to vaccinate us from it eventually. So this is important. The pursuit of outer power is also important, no doubt about it. However, a, we at an individual level are in a situation right now where we don't have much outer power. There is not much we can do about the situation we are in, in terms of externally altering the situation. So that's why our first topic title was go within, look within. And when we do this, what exactly are we trying to do? We understand that that second quadrant is somewhere where we, our where our primary focus has been individually as well as communally as human society to, to gain more and more outer power. Now, if somebody has, if we can't go to the second quadrant, then we can go to the other. If you say the third quadrant is the green one over here. So one, two, three, four. So the third quadrant is when we are under effective. So we have inner power, but not much outer power. So at least we can, we can manage, we can control our emotions, our inner world. So now because we can't do much in the outer world, so we may not be as effective as we would like to be. But that doesn't mean that we have no power. Now the most effective individuals are those who have both inner and outer power. So they, they, can, uh, they can manage, they understand their own values and purposes. So in terms of what we live with and what we live for, we could say outer power is to have resources with us, to what we live with that we have abundantly. And inner power is what we live for. Our values, our purposes are clear to us. So when there is this marriage of purposes and resources of inner power and outer power, that is the time when we are most effective. So now, how can we, so we talk about, we are talking about look within and then we are looking at, uh, we look at through parts, what can we change and what is worth changing? So what can we change? We have something which we can change, we discussed that and largely our energy has been focused on changing our externals, what we live with. 
Now, what can, how can we change what we live for? So I'll use this acronym GET, G-E-T, to explain this. That how, so the essence of say scientific or technological growth is to give us outer power. The essence of spiritual growth is to give us inner power. And situations like this, we can see, we can see a divine compassion and we can have compassion on ourselves by accessing inner power, by seeking to grow spiritually. So get is G-E-T, gain self-understanding, experience inner peace and tap spiritual power. Gain self-understanding. Can we go ahead? Now, now the Bhagavad Gita for self-understanding, it offers, it's a very empowering guidebook. And it says that our existence has three levels, body, mind and soul, consciousness, spirit. These are not exactly interchangeable terms, but for our purposes, we can see them as synonymous, spirit, consciousness, soul. So the uh, one way to understand this is through a metaphor of software so there's the the body is like the hardware the mind is the software and the soul is the user so within the hardware within the hardware there is a lot that we have improved through technology so at a physical level we have we have comforts we have facilities far far better than in the past now we are going to talk at the level of the mind and at the level of the spirit what is it that is possible for us to do so, so at the level of the hardware now at individually there is not much we can do at the level of the body not much is in our control when we talk about outer power and inner power we look at at the level of the mind and at the level of the soul what is it that we can do now sometimes the mind and the soul are equated. So anything above, anything above the body, we or beyond the physical, is often thought of as spiritual. That's why we have mind-body medicine or mind over matter. That's a common phrase. And the idea over there is that uh, there is something beyond the physical, and that we call as the mind. Now the uh, now it is true the mind is beyond the physical. So, the Gita differentiates between the mental and the spiritual. And the idea is that in the inner world, there are multiple levels. In the inner world, I'll repeat this, there are multiple levels. That's why sometimes we may see that we do certain things and we wonder, why did I do that? And it was not that somebody from outside prompted us to do it. We ourselves felt like doing it and we did it. But then later on, we, felt, we thought, why shouldn't I have done this? So it's almost like there are two persons within us, one more impulsive, the other more reflective. And sometimes the impulsive person wins. And then after that, the reflective person wonder, uh, wonders what happened. So we could say the impulsive side within us is the mind. And the person who can, the part of us which can abstract from ourselves and observe ourselves we can observe our mind also that part which is who we essentially are is the soul so the Bhagavad Gita talks about this dual sense of the self uh, in one of its most enigmatic verses that is 6 5 says elevate yourself with yourself don't degrade yourself with yourself. Well, the self is the friend of the self and the self is also the enemy of the self. Now this dual sense of the self is best understood by that one self is the mind. So the mind is like a software and the software keeps giving us pop-ups. Do this. Try this out. Watch this. Do that. And if we get caught, uh, caught in whatever pop-ups come up over there, then we get distracted, we get lost. So for us, uh, we will explore this uh, dual sense of the self later. But for gaining inner power, if we don't have 
this understanding of the difference between the mind and the soul then sometimes we find our, that we are our worst enemies in say <clears throat> in times like uh, these where we are physically rest uh, restricted constrained in what we can do so this is a time to go within but unless we have a proper understanding of what going within means we might find that our inside is is a flickering turbulent and uh, misleading mess you now we have all kinds of drives and cravings and urges and um, wild emotions going on inside us at times so to go within means we have to go deep within go beyond the mind to the essence to the essence of who we are to the soul can you go ahead so what this means is that we are talking about the acronym get g e t this is the concluding part of what we are discussing so gain self understanding so self understanding is what this as spiritual beings we are eternal that beyond our virus prone bodies we are virus proof souls that we exist from our bodies our bodies are associated with our physical situations our minds are associated with various emotions but we exist beyond our bodies and beyond our minds we exist as spiritual beings so there is a part of us which is eternal which is indestructible there is a part of us which exists beyond the ups and downs of daily life and it is that part which we need to seek which we need to situate ourselves in in fact that is not a part that is the that is the essence of who we are so to give an example they somebody might be caught in a virtual reality where say they are watching a movie in which a lot of say violent destructive action is happening and it's not just a movie they are watching say they are playing a simulation now when they are playing a simulation within a video game or a virtual reality there might be many prompts many prompts that come okay do this do this do this okay that you say you are in a car chase and turn left or turn right some prompts might come up but it is we who choose so the simulated world is the physical world and the program that helps us to act in the simulation is the mental world is the mind but we exist beyond both of these so we exist can you go to the next slide we exist above our situations and above our emotions so above so our situations and if we gain the spiritual self understanding that we are indestructible beings and the knowledge that we are indestructible can empower us our situations are meant to be like carpets the carpet is what helps us to the carpet is what helps us to oh, it softens our the ground below us but imagine if the carpet came above us then we would two things will happen we will feel blinded and we will feel suffocated similarly when our circumstances start coming above us they start overwhelming us then we feel suffocated and blinded and today's situation can be like that we might feel i just what can i do what we feel suffocated we feel blinded but by gaining self understanding we can rise above our situations and above our emotions so that was g can you go ahead e is experience inner peace now one is the intellectual understanding that okay i i am a spiritual being who exists beyond my situations my my emotions but how do i access that the way to access it is that by practicing meditation meditation is an elevator for our consciousness meditation is something which just like if we had a we had a multi level building there is a three level say then we can climb up or we can take a elevator up when we take the elevator up we rise 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 to the top level so similarly by meditation we can raise our consciousness to the spiritual level we can experience 
ourselves as different from our situations and our emotions and thereby we can gain per, we can find peace within ourselves there are various various forms of meditation uh, in our tradition we use the power of sonic meditation we use sound as a tool mantra sound in specific forms called mantras as tools for raising our consciousness so now go ahead so g e get how can we get that inner power t is tap tap inner power so how, uh, that means that once we understand our existence is three levels there's body mind and soul at the level of the body uh, at the level physical level there are there is danger for us and the danger we have to be aware of it so we will have to live with anxiety with fear we may have to live with fear we don't have to live in fear if we conceive of ourselves simply as physical beings then the destruction of our of our physique of our body is a destruction of us we live in fear but when we understand that actually our existence is multi level and there is a core to us which is indestructible there is a there are our shell which is destructible and we want to take care of that so there is so fear itself is not a bad thing fear alerts us to danger fear prepares us for facing uncertain situations so we may we may have to live with fear but we don't have to live in fear fear won't consume our consciousness fear will be a component in our consciousness not the container of our consciousness and then we address the situations that are causing us fear with our self understanding with by leveraging whatever power we do have with us so we can see the compassion of the divine in giving us the resources to look within to to gain self understanding to experience inner peace to tap in her power and by that we can face the outer world with greater confidence so in uh, so can you can last slide can you go now so this would be some suggestion for you in each of these i'll give you something to journal so basically things have to be intellectually analyzed and then they have to be personally experienced so during the course of the day we are trying to understand what we live with and what we live for we try to differentiate the two quite often we live in an externally driven uh, sense and we feel a lot of emotions associated with the external world so what are the emotions you feel most strongly attribute them to your mind and articulate them that means say in in a day maybe at the end of the day or maybe at a 3 4 hours we are trying to do some self reflection okay what did i feel that time when i heard about this particular thing, i felt panic when i heard about this i felt uh, i felt some hope when i heard about this particular news when i heard about that i felt i felt annoyance i felt anger now so what the very act of articulating our emotions helps us to distance ourselves from them and analyze them so basically we have our spiritual core but currently we are not invested in our spiritual core we are invested in something else so what is it that we are more emotionally invested in presently that we are trying to understand by what are the emotions that we feel strong, most strongly and then we understand these emotions come from our mind they come up as pop ups something pops up on our computer screen and we get consumed by it we get excited by it but is that really worth getting excited about is that what we really want to do so that so what are the emotions you feel most strongly and then contrast that with what are the things that matter the most to you so you now at this stage of course for us our well being for health matters the health of our loved ones matters that is of course we are taking care of that but what are what are the things that really matter for us if we were to leave our we were we we had just a month to live what would we really want to do uh, what are what are the things that matter to us the most they 
they they are who we are they attribute, attribute them to your soul and articulate them and the greater the distance between what we feel most strongly about and what matters most to us the greater the distance between the two the more we will feel disoriented and disempowered when external things go wrong but when these the closer the two come together what we feel strongly about is also about the what matters the most to us then we will find that we will gain greater sense of power we will be able to tap our inner power so at least what we will be able to do is refocus when things that don't matter so much to us when our emotion uh, emotions get tra trapped in that we can refocus ourselves and come back to where we should be <clears throat> so this i'll summarize what i spoke and then we can have a few questions i started by speaking today about how can we find karuna compassion amid the corona crisis and we are doing this in three sessions look within look up and look ahead so we focus today on look within and the idea is compassion has to begin with compassion for ourselves even that divine compassion has to be seen it can be seen in terms of the vision by which we can gain get a self understanding so our session focused on look within and why do we need to look within we look decide in terms of what can we change so what can we change we talked about the living universal living condition is that we exist at the junction between what is change uh, what, between much that is un, beyond our control and little that is in our control but the un, unique human condition is that though we exist within nature we exist slightly above nature we can regulate our impulses we can examine our drives and <coughs> we articulated this in terms of in the next point what is worth changing that animals largely live for what they live with the bodily needs but we human beings also have an important aspect what we live for it's like we drive for getting drive to we need fuel to drive with but we need some destination to drive for to go toward now <clears throat> technological progress as what is by external progress we get outer power by inner by inner or spiritual progress we get inner power and we talked about how the four quadrant diagram that if there is no outer power and no inner power in quadrant 1 we are powerless we feel miserable and we want to get out of that situation as quickly as possible one way to get out of it is to go up to the spiritual uh, where we gain more and more outer power and that's what humanity has done in the last few centuries but sometimes we just don't have that outer power then what do we do then we might just feel ourselves powerless uh, so we could go to the third quadrant that is have inner power even if we don't have outer power we are under effective but still we are growing internally and the optimal situation is where we have inner and outer power so we are discussing how we can go towards this quadrant quadrant 4 that is outer power and inner power through our journey and then i talked about how to get what can we what how can we change what we can change i talked about three things the get acronym gain self understanding how the gita offers us a, uh, a resource that illumines our inner world it's like a flashlight our existence is three level body mind and spirit so beyond our virus prone bodies we are virus proof souls and we exist above our situations and our emotions and understanding this itself and experiencing it through practices like meditation can help us experience inner peace and then then we can tap inner power how do we tap that spiritual power by understanding that in such a situation fear is going to be there but fear can be a part of our consciousness not the whole of our consciousness we may have to live with fear but not in fear and to differentiate between this with fear and in fear we discussed about uh, try to understand through journaling where we are emotionally invested and where we want to where what is it actually matters for us 
so the lesser the gap between what triggers our emotions and what matters the most to us therein we will be able to tap more and more inner power and move forward in our lives so thank you very much are there any questions or comments out because there's a little bit of background noise but if you'd like to ask a question or share a reflection a comment ask for clarification um, please go ahead and unmute yourself um, I, I wanted to just start off by Chaitanya uh, Sharanji just asking you very quickly I think you, you kind of alluded to this but I wanted to just clarify a little bit um, one of the things that I think many of us are struggling with particularly when it comes to um, experiencing that fear is less fear for ourselves and more as, as I think you, I heard you mention fear for our loved ones, particularly those in very vulnerable situations. And so it seems to be, um, it's a little challenging when hearing teachings that seem to emphasize that we are the indestructible self and not the body it can seem from a certain angle to be a little bit dismissive of the, the real dangers that exist. Even though we know theoretically, okay, our loved ones are also, as you said, virus-proof selves or souls, um, but we relate to them in their embodied state and we love them and we feel that you know connection to them in that embodied state. So isn't it a little um, dismissive or, or hard-hearted to, to not care about them in that embodied state and to not experience that fear for them? Yeah, that's a very important point that we may not, if we say that everybody is a spiritual being, but we connect with people at the embodied level, our loved ones, so should we not care for them or are we dismissing their physical side? Not exactly dismissing, we need to contextualize that means that <clears throat> at one level if you look at the wisdom of the Gita the Gita begins with a radical uh, matter spirit dualism where it says this is matter this is spirit but while there is separation in the beginning if we, we see as it moves forward it moves from separation toward integration integration means the the body and so the mat the body and the soul they work together as one cohesive unit and when we care for our <coughs> when we care for our loved ones now we care for the complete person and right now the for us in the embodied condition the the physical self is imp important for us because that's that's what is essential for our functioning. See, we relate with each other. If somebody treats us simply as a physical creature, you know that somebody <clears throat> that is that also leads to a very unfulfilling relationship. Now, when people have relationships based on only physical drives, then people start feeling I'm being treated like a treated like basically a a robot, a machine, a bendable robot which is used for gratifying one's desire. So, if we reduce people to physical creatures, then also we can't have very fulfill, fulfilling relationships. But if we reduce people solely to the spiritual level and neglect their physical, then we don't have, we are reflecting an incomplete understanding or I would say incorrect understanding of the nature of our present condition. So, when we care for someone we care for their complete being and the complete being means body mind and soul together so <clears throat> so there is danger and the danger has to be uh, taken has to be addressed so now what about uh, are we being dismissive it's as i said if we'd be dismissive i would have said that you know we don't have to have any fear because we are not the body but i said not that we may have to live with fear but not in fear and uh, we want to help our, our loved ones we want to care for them and the best way we can care for them is to help them also to expand their consciousness so that fear may, fear may be a, be a part but it doesn't have to be the whole 
and uh, so i would say both extremes reducing people reducing our loved ones to simply the physical bodies or reducing them to simply the spiritual souls without considering their embodied condition both are ex unhealthy extremes and a holistic understanding is where we care for the complete person and there are times when say during the normal functioning we may not uh, consider so much the physical self we consider the normal person but there are times when somebody is sick then the way we care for them is by caring for their physical side physical body there are times when that is what we relate with uh, more so this will relate this will vary depending on situation but the idea is we care for the complete person okay thank you I'll just read a question that came through over the chat window. I think some folks need to keep muted out because of other um, noises going on on their side. But someone is asking, how would you respond to the idea that, that spiritualists are being selfish or indulgent by focusing on meditation at a time when so many people are in need of help? Okay. Uh, so are we are spiritualists being selfish by focusing on meditation uh, well if it is uh, you remember the fourth four quadrants if somebody stays stuck in the third quadrant and doesn't at all come to the fourth quadrant third quadrant is inner power but no outer power and somebody worst is that they are not even in the third quadrant they are actually in the first quadrant but pretending to be in the third quadrant that means one is not even developing inner power but one is using meditation as a way to escape from the outer world uh, then as a way to evade one's responsibilities that is unhealthy there are some people who do this but that's not what uh, spirituality is all about if we consider the bhagavad gita it is about a warrior arjuna who had a serious responsibility and he wanted to flee from that responsibility the bhagavad gita told him no you can have a spiritual vision inside but you make your material contribution outside so meditation is meant to help us gain inner power so that we can contribute externally now how exactly in what situation one contribute that will vary so is it that we just meditate and don't do anything else no we try to contribute to society in whatever way we can and meditation is also one way now if we consider in today's world while people while a lot of practical help is needed but more important than that is is fear management now resource management is important thing but fear and if it grips people it can go toward panic and once it goes towards panic it can often when we are panicky then our reaction to a problem becomes a bigger problem than the problem itself just like say if there is fire in a uh, if there's a cro close crowded place like close like say a movie theater and the fire causes some casualties but the stampede when people try to flee from it causes greater casualties so we don't want panic at this stage and our spirituality is a means by which we can gain inner power and with that inner power we can contribute in the outer world so if meditation is used to as a as a tool to escape from the outer world then that is unhealthy but if meditation is seen as a tool to prepare ourselves so that we can contribute better in the outer world then that is the healthy and uh, proper way of accessing our spirituality Thank you. Do we have other questions? I think everyone might be muted automatically, but you should have the ability to unmute yourself. So, if anyone has any questions, um, please do go ahead and unmute yourself, and you can ask directly. Or if you feel more comfortable, you can send it to me through the private chat feature in the chat window. Um, I have a question. Does it make sense to feel that um, 
empowering um, to get uh, rid of the fear of our existence by accepting that our soul, we are where we have to be at each time. So accepting our reality, would that make sense? Oh yes, definitely. Will accepting our accepting that where we are is where we are meant to be help us to deal with fear, to get rid of fear? Yes, definitely. In fact, that is going to be our next session. Uh, look up. Look up means where we are going to see how there is not only a spiritual core to us, but there is a spiritual purpose to existence and to the to what happens, and the universe moves purposefully. So. So we now, now uh, I wouldn't say we will get rid of fear because when we talk about getting rid of something, we consider that as something which is bad, unwanted garbage and get rid of it. Well, fear is not itself garbage. You know, fear is a natural and necessary, uh, necessary pointer to danger. If there were no fear, we would get ourselves into danger and trouble. Uh, unnecessarily. If a child peers down a hundred level building through a window or from the terrace and the child feels no fear, the mother will feel great fear. What are you doing? So people who are, there is there's a difference between being courageous and being, being foolhardy. So people who don't feel any fear at all, that's not a very, we put up, we'll put ourselves in very are they in dangerous situations unnecessarily. So we shouldn't think that fear itself is a bad thing, but rather being dominated by fear is a bad thing. So I, I sometimes differentiate between fear and fearfulness. Now we fear will be there whenever there's uncertainty, whenever there's great uncertainty, there'll be a certain amount of fear. But fearfulness is when we are dominated by that fear. So yes, when we understand the universe moves purposefully and we are we are at a place which is which is optimized for our spiritual evolution then that we will not be gripped by or driven by fear but we will be able to respond more maturely thank you thank you um, there's a question uh, received over in chat um, and the question is asking if um, if you wouldn't mind and if you feel comfortable, if you could share your most strongly felt emotions around the coronavirus crisis, um, and, and, and as you spoke of um, attributing to the mind and soul, if you could um, share how you articulated these strongly felt emotions for yourself and what you kind of attributed to mind and attributed to the soul. Okay, yeah. So my emotions and how I attributed them <clears throat> over the last say couple of weeks or so, I was on a I was on a speaking tour and I, I was in Aust I was in New Ze Australia and then New Zealand and then I was supposed to go to Australia and then come to America, but then I had to cancel that and I am now back in India. So there's a significant amount of changes which I had to do. So I would say my emotions have been three main emotions annoyance amazement and alarm so initially when I, my travel schedule got disrupted i was annoyed by it then as i'm seeing amazement not in the sense of amusement but amazement simply in the sense of you know how uh, the whole world with its huge economy with its great power can be brought to a standstill it's it's amazing ama and then alarm has been there because it's it's an alarming situation in some ways. So I would say that the way I, I dealt with it is that I am trying to grow spiritually myself and share resources for spiritual growth. And if I keep that as my purpose, so there is, as I said, what we live with and what we live for. So, so traveling around, speaking, making various plans by which I could do these things. This is this is the external part, and when the external part is not suddenly the control is taken away, then what is it that really matters for me? So ultimately, I feel that what I share 
primarily is uh, its spiritual resources through sound by speaking uh, and writing is also through sound so and it's not just when i speaking i i try to i'm not speaking to others alone i'm speaking in a sense primarily to myself because when we speak we understand us we understand things better we assimilate them more so i am trying to recognize that i am trying to remind myself and refocus that you know, although the external arrangements have been disrupted for me but the core purpose of what i was trying to do that is to share spiritual resources for raising one's consciousness my own consciousness as others consciousness that i can do even without being able to necessarily physically travel after i came back uh, from <clears throat> from new zealand i have been in self isolation so i was at one level probably the previous 14 days i must uh, in one week i must have tra- traveled thousands of miles and now in the last one week i haven't even got out of my room so the externals can change drastically but if this is the change in the external sometimes we get so caught in the externals that we f- forget what is the purpose we are doing it for so i am trying to in the take this opportunity to come closer to my purpose which is to deepen my connection with spiritual sound which your sound refers to mantra spiritual sound refers to the wisdom texts as they are articulated it as through speaking through writing i'm trying to connect myself more and trying to share that connection more with others i hope that helps thank you on the spot or or um, no. embarrassing you in any way but uh, okay. also I hope you're you're doing well on the physical level um I yeah. I, I know and many of us um who've known you for some time know that uh in this life you faced a number of of um health challenges as well and so um you know definitely uh feeling some concern around that and and hoping that um Yeah, just hoping that you're in a, a safe protected space and it sounds like you are and that self yeah. isolation is a good thing right now. Yes, I am. Thank you for your concern. And I hope that you and your family are also doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um we're we're arriving um or we've arrived at the the end of our time together for for this session and of course we'll continue tomorrow from 11 to noon and then again conclude with a session on Sunday from 11 to noon. Would you just take a minute or two to give us a little bit of a sneak preview of um what we might examine tomorrow and on Sunday? Okay, yeah. So, I'm going to talk about tomorrow as I said look up. We'll try to understand the the role of divinity in the shaping of things in our life. So, tomorrow I'll be talking about today I talk about this acronym <clears throat> get tomorrow we're talking about an acronym called act which will be more about how we look at uh, the nature of the divine and make sense of things in terms of uh, how they happen in life and why they happen so there is uh, I'll uh, that uh, I'll talk about destiny free will and I'll talk about evil and free will in that context so the f- the focus will be in tomorrow session on we look at look within to understand our situation but we look at the big picture and then we try to face uh, try to place ourselves within that big picture by understanding that the reality the totality of reality is ultimately congenial it's not hostile and in the last session i'll be talking about some practical steps that we can take when we are facing life challenges we'll talk about look ahead how whether we should look long term we should look short term and how can we uh, take practical steps to move on when we are in situations of fear and uncertainty okay so thank you very much for joining today and i look forward to being with you tomorrow and day after